time of slavery. And, and we've come to think about uh, uh, the prison industrial complex uh, as uh, linked very much to slavery, as uh, revealing the sediments and the vestiges of slavery, as providing evidence that the slavery we may have thought was abolished uh, uh, with the 13th Amendment is still very much with us. It haunts us, especially uh, in uh, uh, the form of this vast prison industrial complex, a prison system within the U.S. that holds uh, something like 2.5 million people, more people in prison than anywhere else in the world, more people per capita uh, um, as well. The rate of incarceration one in 100 adults in the U.S. Uh, is behind bars, and that's really only because of the disproportionate number of black people and people of color uh, who, whose lives have been claimed by the prison system. Um, as a matter of fact, it's uh, very interesting that we think about the history of the prison system in in, in this country as um, grounded largely in the northeastern penitentiaries, the Auburn system here in, in New York, uh, not very far from where I am teaching, and uh, the Philadelphia system. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Robert Perkins has written an, an interesting new book called Texas Tough, in which he argues that the Southern system, which emerged in the aftermath of slavery, which, which uh, 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 um, made use of the, the, the violent forms of repression that were linked to slavery, is as much a part of the genealogy of punishment in the U.S. as uh, the, the New York and the Pennsylvania penitentiaries. We, by the way, I want to let our viewers and listeners know, have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash democracy now, where you can post questions for Professor Angela Davis. She's speaking to us from Ithaca College in Ithaca, New York, and a shout out to our friends at Ithaca College, um, and has written a new critical edition um, that features her lectures on liberation, uh, along with the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave written by himself. And I would like to go there now with you, Angela Davis, the idea of the plantation to prison pipeline. Let's start from the beginning. And why now, um, at this point in your work, in your activism, in your life, you've chosen to go back to, to uh, bring out once again um, and give us your critical perspective on Frederick Douglass. Why was he so significant? And tell us about his life as you respond to that question. Well, Frederick Douglass is, of course, the germinal figure in the history of um, um, African-American liberation. But Frederick Douglass is, is also uh, an absolutely central figure in U.S. history. And I think that uh, uh, it is important to understand his contributions, uh, particularly given the fact that we constantly refer to him. And in my introduction, I pointed out that uh, when Barack Obama was campaigning for, for office, he very frequently referred to that, uh, perhaps the most famous passage in Frederick Douglass's uh, work, which was uh, 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 a speech that he gave on West Indian uh, Day. Uh, and it, it begins, if there um, is no struggle, uh, there is no progress. Uh, I thought that it might be important to think about Frederick Douglass from the vantage point of where we are in the 21st century, particularly given the uh, feminist contributions, given the contributions of black feminism, uh, particularly because um, historically the conceptualization of, of freedom has been linked to manhood, the conceptualization of black freedom to black manhood. And I refer to that passage that everyone who has read Frederick Douglass knows about 
his confrontation with the slave breaker Covey. Uh, and in the aftermath of this physical altercation in which Frederick Douglass emerges as the winner, he realizes that he has, in the process, defended his manhood. But that is his way of experiencing the possibilities of freedom. So I ask in that introduction, you know, what about uh, women? Uh, what is the trajectory of freedom for women? And in the 19th um, in the 19th century, of course, uh, uh, at least within the literary genre of the sentimental novel, that trajectory ended with marriage. So marriage was uh, the equivalent form of freedom for women. Um, and I also refer to Harriet uh, Jacobs' wonderful uh, narrative incidents in the life of a slave girl, in which she makes a point of pointing out that uh, her story does not end with marriage, but rather with freedom. So the question is, how can we rec how can we recognize the masculinist dimensions of our uh, conception of freedom, and um, move on from there here in the 21st century? And can you talk about the significance of Frederick Douglass being enslaved as a youth, as a teenager in St. Michael's. Interestingly, Covey's property in St. Michael's is called Mount Misery, is now owned by, well, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. It's his vacation home. Um, he bought it in 2003 to be near his <laughs> close friend, Vice President Dick Cheney. <laughs> But, uh, well, it's very interesting. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know if there's a but there, but uh, but if you can um, <laughs> talk about how Frederick Douglass, what his uh, role in the abolition movement was, and how the abolition movement shaped not just Black America, shaped America. Well, Frederick Douglass was the most prominent uh, um, black abolitionist, uh, uh, the most prominent abolitionist, I would, I would argue, uh, uh, because such, a, such an, um, an amazing figure as William Lloyd Garrison, uh, the, the great white abolitionist, also had his problems. Uh, and then I would like to perhaps point out that we have still not come to grips with the fact that uh, a John Brown was a part of that abolitionist movie, um, movement. Uh, he was, during that time, referred to as uh, insane, uh, and many people treat him today as if uh, uh, he must have been uh, mentally disordered in order to uh, devote his life in that uh, that way to the struggle for freedom for black slaves. Uh, Frederick Douglass was the germinal figure of the abolitionist uh, movement. And abolition, the abolitionist movement is important for us today because it uh, continues, well, it, 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 it has its um, uh, contemporary presence in what we call the 21st century abolitionist movement, which attempts to, first of all, of course, abolish the death penalty. And I'm thinking of Mumia Abu-Jamal, uh, who is uh, such an important figure in, in that abolitionist movement, and to abolish uh, the prison industrial complex. Uh, we see the effort to um, um, abolish imprisonment as the dominant mode of punishment and to shift resources uh, from uh, punishment to education to housing, etc., in a way that is very similar to what Frederick Douglass might have argued with respect to the abolition of slavery. And of course, here we also have to mention uh, W.E.B. Uh, du Bois, who called for, who's notion of abolition democracy is very much an inspiration for the, uh, those of us who are struggling to abolish the prison industrial complex today. 
We're going to break, and then we're going to come back. Angela Davis is our guest. Uh, professor Davis is now teaching at Syracuse University. She is professor emerita of University of California, Santa Cruz. Uh, she is an author and activist. Her latest book is the release of a critical edition of the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave written by himself. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.